Hey data fans, Reid here. Today is going to be another demonstration of creative ways to design buttons in Power BI. This time we're going to learn how to create a slide effect toggle button using just the native buttons in Power BI Desktop. Now the benefit of this is that you're not going to have to import any images into your Power BI file, which can require time to design in Photoshop and can start to add size and bloat to your model. All this will require is a bit of formatting magic on the native buttons themselves. So. Let's go ahead and hop into Power BI and get started. So I'm going to start us off by showing us what this will look like in the Power BI service. What we have here is a visual in front of us that can be toggled between two different types of visualizations. And if you come up here and you'll notice there's a toggle button that has a couple of effects on it. By default, it is over on the right. If I hover over it, it kind of goes into the middle and changes color. And then if I click it, it goes over to the left. And if I release the left mouse button, it has switched to an area chart. So I basically have a sliding toggle button here that I used a native button visual to create that allows me to toggle between two different visuals. Now the primary focus of this video will be to focus on how to design this button itself. If you're curious about how to toggle the visibility between two different charts that I have as the example, I do have another video that I'll link you over to on the right or down below in the description that will explain in further detail how to actually set up the bookmarks for all of that. And I'll even show you the bookmarks playlist that I have that has a lot of other bookmarks and buttons features as well. Again, over on the right or down in the description. So now that you've seen the effect of this, let's go ahead and go into Power BI Desktop and explore how to build this. So I'm going to start the demonstration by coming up to View, turning on the Selection pane. There we are. Opening up the Selection pane, and let's take a look at this group that I have in here. If I open up Visuals, you'll notice that there's actually two little groups in here inside of there. We have one for Area button, which currently is hidden, and one for Column. If I actually hide the column one, you'll see that that goes away. And if I turn on the area one, that toggles on and has the other one. So there's actually two buttons on the page. And when I activate the bookmark, it toggles between them. And again, there's more information on how to set up these bookmarks in one of my supplemental videos that you can find in the description. But let's go ahead and go over to the buttons page and see how these were actually built as far as the formatting goes. So I'm going to come up to the column one, select that. There we go. Click in a few times into the group to get the exact button selected. And let's go ahead and come over to our visualization section and talk about the design of this. So what I actually have in here to start with in button text is a symbol that I used that I brought into here actually using the Windows Emoji Keyboard. Again, to do that, if you press the Windows key and semicolon, you get a pop-up. And if I look for a circle, what I actually put into here was the symbol for circle. Let me put that up one more time. That is inserted in, and that becomes the actual sliding button itself. And what I did is I just adjusted the font size to make it big enough to kind of fit into that. And I added a little bit of padding so it wasn't wedged all the way over onto the side and it had a little bit of space there. And what I also did is I configured this for three different button states. The default state, which is what it looks like by default, is over on the right alignment. Now on hover, because I want them to have it start to slide over, I changed that alignment to the middle. So you can see that. When I hover over it, now that button is in the middle. I also changed the fill color both in, if I come down here, outline, you can see that that on hover state has a gray color for the outline and that fill also has for the on hover a gray color as well. And to get that circular look around it, that's actually something that's done over under outline. You'll notice that there's a feature called rounded edges. If I set that to zero, and this is for on hover, so let's go look at it again on on hover, you see that it is now a completely square object. So the rounded edges give it a bit of that rounded look that makes it again look more like a sliding toggle button you'd expect to see on an iPhone or other app type features. Go ahead and put that rounded edges back. There we go. And really the three primary things that I did that are turned on here is I configured the default on hover and on press for fill, outline, and button text. And that gave me a radio button effect that slides over for this one. And then the opposite color application and formatting is applied to this one to get it to slide back to the other direction. And then being paired with a series of bookmarks, if we come back over to the toggle button section, it basically just toggles the two perspectives. It hides and unhides the visuals, meaning that it is hiding and unhiding various visuals on this page per the bookmark configuration. I get an effect that allows me to have a sliding toggle that goes back and forth between an area chart and a column chart, just as an example with the data in here. And again, I'm really happy I was able to figure this out just using the native visual. 
I initially had this as a client request and more than likely I was probably going to go download an image that looked like a button slider and do some configurations there, but that sometimes requires editing in Photoshop or PowerPoint. And then I might also have to start adding file size depending on how big the, all those buttons are into the file. So this is actually a really nice solution that I was very happy that I could build entirely just using some formatting. Again, that really nice little pop-up that you can get with the Windows key and the semicolon, it gives you those icons. So hopefully you find this useful and something that you can implement in your reports. Thank you so much for watching. And please don't forget to like, comment, or share this video. If this is your first time to my channel or you want to see more of these awesome videos, smash that subscribe and notification button. And last but not least, you can download the file for today's video from my blog files page using the link down below.